seats. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. So this week, our Torah portion is Lech Lecha. Um, and we're introduced to all of the characters in Abraham's family, to Abraham and to his household. So we meet his wife, Sarai, and we meet his nephew, Lot, and we start to hear all the different things that happen to them once God sends them from where they were living to, to go in a new place, towards a new place. And the Parsha is sort of filled with these little um, stories of, of their different experiences and journeys. And along the way, um, we pick up um, another character, which is Hagar. Um, and, um, and it's interesting because Hagar um, just kind of appears in the Torah um, at a point where she's needed. Um, it, Abraham and Sarai can't have a child, and um, she's called upon to, to bear this child, and she's um, named as an Egyptian slave. She's there, she's the maid servant. Um, but where did she come from? She just kind of appears in the household and nobody really noticed her until they needed her, I guess. But um, the rabbis fill it in with a midrash. Um, and, um, and to do that, they go back to um, one of the stories before um, she's introduced, where Abraham and Sarai go down into Egypt because um, there's a famine in, the, in their land. And they go down into Egypt, and um, they end up putting on a bit of a performance because there's, um, Sarai was very beautiful, and Abraham is worried that she's going to um, be cause for him to be attacked, that, like, other, that the Egyptian men will attack him so that they can take her. Um, and that he might be in danger. And, you know, they're, they're essentially refugees in this moment, right? They're coming into a land that's not their land. They're seeking food. They're vulnerable. Um, and so he asks Sarai to say that she's his sister so that um, he won't be harmed um, on her account. And she agrees. And um, lo and behold... Um, the Egyptian men are very interested in her, and they um, carry her off to the pharaoh. Um, and we don't really know a lot about what happens to her there. She's not there for very long because God um, lets Pharaoh know what's going on, and Pharaoh returns her. Um, but um, we can imagine that it might have been a relatively traumatic experience for her. Um, and... When Pharaoh returns her, um, Pharaoh is, is horrified when he learns that, you know, that this woman actually is married to somebody else. And so when he returns her to Abraham, he also gives Abraham um, slaves and cattle to um, assuage his, uh, the injustice that's been done. Um, and so um, the rabbis connect this to Hagar um, as her origin story, that she was one of these Egyptians who leaves um, Egypt with Abraham and Sarai as part of that sort of package deal that they get to quietly leave Egypt and not make any more trouble for the pharaohs. So, um, so that's where the rabbis... Um, that's where they say she comes from. Um, and it's interesting because she comes into their household in this time where they had been strangers in a strange land, where they had been the vulnerable ones. Um, but, uh, and then she becomes the one who is um, displaced and vulnerable um, outside of Egypt in their household. Um, and her name um, tells us really about her status because her name, Hagar, 
um, sounds a lot like hager, which means the stranger. So she's, you know, literally a stranger in their, in their home and a, and a stranger in the land that she now resides in. And so there's a sort of a question that arises around, you know, having had this experience Abraham and Sarai, having had this experience of being displaced and vulnerable, um, how will they treat those who then are in their households who are displaced and vulnerable? Um, and when they're, um, you know, and, and to extrapolate that to us today, right? Having had periods where we have been oppressed, how do we treat others when we're in positions of power, dominance, or privilege. Um, and unfortunately, Abraham and Sarai, um, as so often happens in Bereshit, um, they mostly show us um, an example of what not to do. Um, because um, they're not very nice to Hagar. Um, they, first of all, they force her to bear a child. We don't have any um we don't we don't hear her voice we don't know if she wanted this role in their family or not um and then um when she becomes pregnant sarai is very jealous of her um, because she couldn't have children and she mistreats her the torah says um she's quite harsh with her and eventually um hagar runs away because um she's being treated so badly and she goes out into the wilderness and um, she encounters uh, an angel, right? Um, and the angel tells her um, not to fear and to go back home um, and that she's going to bear a child who will be the leader of a great nation, right? And the angel tells her that the child's name will be Ishmael, right? And Ishmael means um, God has heard. God has heard you. God has heard your suffering and your struggle. And it's interesting because then she gives that place a name and she calls it um, the place where Adonai Roi, where God saw me. So God says, I've heard you. And then she says, I've been seen by God. So there's this connection between hearing somebody suffering and their feeling that they've been seen. And God ends up modeling this for us because Abraham and Sarai don't. They don't see her suffering. They don't hear her, her struggle. They don't see her really as a person beyond what they need her for. But um, but God shows us um, that the importance of seeing, of witnessing the struggle, and not just the struggle as we might expect the Torah to show us, but not just that we meant to acknowledge the struggle of one another in our own communities, in our own families, in our own um, nation, right? But actually the person who is being seen by God, who's being affirmed by God, is Hager, the stranger. And so there's a really powerful lesson here for us um, between these two women, right? How might it have been different if they had been able to witness one another's struggles, if they'd been able to be allies to one another, if they'd been able to be sisters to one another, if they'd really been able to see and hear one another. And, and recognize each other's traumas. And so all the more so for us, if we want other people to acknowledge our struggles and our traumas, we also have to acknowledge those of Hager, of the stranger, of the other. We can't only be focused on our own 
pain. We have to hear and we have to see the experience of others. And it's, it's powerful, right, that this, that this story reminds us, you know, of this ancient, this ancient history and these two people in this land. And if when we are telling our story of pain, we trace it back to the, this land and this moment and this family, we're not the only ones who trace our line back to this moment. And we can't tell our story without telling that story, without hearing not only how all of that history has been painful for us, but how it's been painful for others. Avraham and Sarai are learning. They're not perfect and we're not perfect. But God is showing us when someone is struggling, whether they're from our tribe or whether they're in other, that we're called upon to hear and to see and hopefully to um, work to end that suffering. Because only when nobody is suffering our suffering can't end until all suffering ends. It's all connected. And it always has been connected all the way back to this moment in the Torah that we read this week. So I share the invitation, this oldest, one of the oldest invitations of our people, really, to see and to hear and to respond. Shabbat Shalom. So...